Hello everyone. You know, India is a home to over 7 million people affected with Parkinson's disease. And yet we all know very little about this most common neurodegenerative disorder. And I would like to take this opportunity to discuss more about this uh, most common neurodegenerative disorder. Today we have Dr. Dwarkanath Srinivas with us to answer all our queries, uh, to give us insight about the advanced treatment options, and of course, the role of physiotherapy in Parkinson's disease. Uh, Dr. Dwarkanath, I would like you to introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Thank you, Pallavi, for having me over here. And I am Dr. Dwarkanath Srinivas. I'm Professor of Neurosurgery at uh, Nimhans, Bangalore. And uh, we are running this movement disorders program for quite some time. Okay, that's really wonderful, sir. Uh, my first question to you would be, uh, I think one of the most common questions we all have encountered in our healthcare practice, is Parkinson's disease curable? What are your thoughts about it? Uh, technically, no, because Parkinson's is a degenerative condition in which uh, the cells stop uh, or some of the cells stop manufacturing dopamine. So if you look at it that way, it is not a curable disease. With medicines and supportive treatment, these patients can lead a, a near normal life for quite some time. Okay, having said that, uh, what are the major treatment options which are available for uh, patients with Parkinson's disease? The first step is of course the right diagnosis uh, because not only Parkinson's disease, there are many mimics of Parkinson's disease. Uh, the main therapy and the mainstay of treatment is, of course, medical management, where, where drugs are given to replace the uh, chemicals which are not being produced. Apart from this, Parkinson's patients have a lot of other issues like speech difficulties and swallowing difficulties. So speech therapists come into action there. Then many of them do not actually uh, are not confident enough to go about their occupation and their the activities of daily living. So here where occupational therapy comes into fort, then we have uh, cognitive therapy and behavioral therapy, and then physiotherapy, which is a very important part of day-to-day uh, -day life of these patients. And once all of them fail, or then once they start showing signs of not responding to this treatment, then we have the surgical management, uh, which comes in the form of deep brain stimulation. All right, uh, very interesting. Uh, what are your thoughts about the deep brain stimulation therapy? Can you please elaborate it a little bit more in detail for all of us? So generally, deep brain stimulation therapy, we need the patient needs to be at least uh, have a five years course of the disease. After that, only we plan for deep brain stimulation, and then we do an extensive testing of the patients and whether these they will benefit from surgery. So what we do is we place two implantable wires into certain areas of the brain which are connected to an external pacemaker, which is placed under the skin in the chest, something like a cardiac pacemaker. And these are stimulated depending on the parameters and the response of the patients. So what it does is it basically improves the quality of life of these patients and also reduces the drug, drug requirements. Uh, so uh, almost <clears throat> one and a half lakh now patients have benefited from deep brain stimulation therapy worldwide. And uh, over the last few years, many uh, advances have come into uh, the surgical field, like uh, rechargeable batteries, like sensing enabled DBS devices, which provides, uh, which senses the signals in the patient's brain and helps us plan our stimulation parameters. So, uh, but it's important to note that deep brain stimulation is not a cure. It, True. Does it helps improve symptoms and quality of life for many of these patients, and also it is not that it is a uh, it is uh, beneficial for all the patients. They need to go through extensive testing before we can actually recommend deep brain stimulation for them. And for that, they consult need to consult both a neurologist and a neurosurgeon before taking any such decisions. That, that's really wonderful uh, insight you have given uh, to all of us about DBS. It does really sound effective in certain cases. Uh, what about physiotherapy? What do you think, where, what is the role of physiotherapy in the entire process of uh, rehabilitation for these patients? Yeah, that's a very good question. Like I already had mentioned briefly, uh, once the Parkinson's disease sets in, most of these patients start having these locomotor disturbances. And the 
uh, one of the main benefits of physiotherapy is that it helps to help the patient uh, move safely and independently and keep the body as fit as possible. I mean, we prescribe them various exercises, flexibility exercises, walking, swimming, etc., in which uh, the whole idea is to maintain the functional independence of the patient. And uh, also, since these patients have an abnormal gait, they are prone to what you call falls. So, okay. it helps you to maintain a proper walking posture and also improves your day to day activity. Uh, absolutely, sir. Being a physiotherapist myself, I can second on that. I think the correct medical management and correct therapeutic approach really improves the quality of life in uh, these patients. Um, having said that, do you have any real life uh, patient story which uh, you can share with all of us uh, where, uh, you know, physiotherapy and maybe DBS or the medical management has really made a greater significant change in patients uh, in, uh, entire quality of life definitely i mean we have so many patients and now some of my patients uh, have been following up with me for almost 15 to 20 years so i mean uh, there have been parents there have been grandparents there have been um, young adults and uh, of course we had a patient uh, <clears throat> grandmother who underwent uh, dbs successfully and was able to go back to a normal life we had another grandmother from Chennai who went back to classical singing after uh, after successful surgery. Uh, we've had patients who, uh, I mean, who was about to be fired from the his department where he was working because of significant tremor which he had, and uh, somehow with the help of uh, uh, generous donors, we raised funds for his surgery, and he went back cured back to his original job. So I mean, uh, these are very nice stories to hear because what uh, surgery does is it helps these patients regain their functional independence, which is an important part in the psyche of these patients. Because I mean, they're completely and physically, phys mentally very sharp, and it's very depressing that uh, because of the physical debility, they are unable to work. So once they get deep brain stimulation. They regain their confidence and many of them have gone back to the work and living a very good uh, life now. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Dwarkanath, for all these wonderful insights. And I definitely gain a very wonderful insight about DBS because I myself, I have never, uh, you know, heard about DBS in so much detail earlier times. So thank you so much for your wonderful insights. Definitely uh, the medical management, DBS, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, all the supplementary therapies for that matter improves the quality of life and it's wonderful to see that. Thank you so much for joining with us today to clear all of our doubts regarding all these advanced therapies which can improve a uh, patient's quality of life. Thank once again, I thank you uh, for interacting with all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pallavi and glad to be here and happy to help. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for watching this video, for more awareness, for, for knowing more about Parkinson's disease. You can ask questions, you can comment on the video, you can DM all of us, you can just be in touch regarding the Parkinson's disease. Remember, it's just a diagnosis. It's not the end of the life to have PD with all these advanced techniques and all these advanced uh, trainings, physiotherapy, occupational therapy. One can definitely improve the quality of life. So that's it for today and thank you so much for watching our video.